Imagine you're sitting calmly on a flight, sipping a drink, when suddenly, with a deafening boom, the roof above your head tears away, leaving nothing but open sky. Oxygen rips out, people scream. And at 24,000 feet you're staring at death. This isn't a movie it really happened in 1988 on Aloha. Airlines Flight 243 It was April 28, 1988. The Low Airlines Flight 243, a short island hopper in Hawaii, was scheduled to fly from Hilo to Honolulu. Nothing unusual, the flight was just 35 minutes long. Carrying 89 passengers and 6 crew, no one had any idea this short trip would become one of aviation's most shocking survival stories. The plane was a Boeing 737-200, tail number N73711. At the time, it was nearly 19 years old and had flown more than 89,000 flights, one of the highest cycles for a passenger aircraft. But passengers boarding that day weren't thinking about statistics. They just wanted to get home or enjoy their Hawaiian vacation. Captain Robert Schornsheimer an experienced pilot with over 8,500 flight hours, was in command. Beside him sat First Officer Madeline Mimi Tompkins, who had nearly 8,000 hours herself. Both were calm, skilled, and unaware they were about to face the fight of their lives. Flight 243 took off from Hilo at 1.25 p.m. local time. Clear skies, calm weather, everything normal. Passengers chatted, some dozed off. Others admired the blue ocean below. Just 23 minutes into the flight, the plane reached its cruising altitude of 24,000 feet. That's when everything went wrong. With a sudden explosion, a massive section of the fuselage ripped away. From above row 5 to row 18, the roof of the cabin was simply gone torn open like a sardine can. Air screamed out of the cabin. Luggage and debris flew instantly into the sky. The plane had become a convertible jet. The decompression was so violent that flight attendant Clarabel C.B. Lansing, who was standing near row 5, was instantly sucked out of the aircraft. In a split second, she vanished into the sky. She was the only crew member lost that day, but her death sent shockwaves through aviation history. Passengers clutched their seats, screaming. Many weren't even wearing seatbelts. The wind roared so loudly inside the plane that no one could hear instructions. Oxygen masks dropped down. But in the chaos, many passengers struggled to put them on. Everyone thought they were about to die. Inside the cockpit, Captain Schornstheimer and First Officer Tompkins could barely hear each other. Warning alarms blared. The plane shook violently. Yet somehow, both pilots stayed calm. They immediately donned their oxygen masks and began an emergency descent toward Maui. The cockpit door had been ripped away, giving the pilots a horrifying view into the cabin. Terrified passengers, shredded roof, open sky above. Tompkins later said it was like flying a plane inside a hurricane. The controls were stiff. And pieces of metal rattled looser on them. The pilots radioed an emergency to air traffic control. Aloha to for three were declaring an emergency. Controllers in Maui scrambled. Clearing all runways and preparing for the impossible a half-destroyed 737 attempting to land. Despite the chaos, some passengers were heroic. Off-duty flight attendants helped others put on oxygen masks, held children tightly, and tried to calm panicked travelers. Many thought the plane would break apart completely before reaching land. For 13 terrifying minutes, the plane flew in this shredded state. Every second could have been its last. Metal fatigue had literally peeled the fuselage apart. Investigators later said it was a miracle the wings and engines stayed attached at all. As the aircraft descended below 14,000 feet, passengers could finally breathe without masks, but the nightmare wasn't over. The pilots had to land a jet that was missing nearly one-fifth of its upper structure, one wrong move, and the plane could shatter on impact. At 1.58 p.m., Captain Schornstheimer lined up for an emergency landing at Kahului Airport, Maui. Fire trucks and ambulances stood ready along the runway. Passengers gripped hands. Bracing for the crash they thought was coming. Against all odds, the captain managed to bring the crippled 737 down onto the runway. The landing gear held. The plane skidded to a stop as emergency crews rushed forward. The cabin erupted in cheers shock, relief, and disbelief. They had survived the unthinkable. Out of 95 people on board, 94 survived, 
Only flight attendant Clarabelle Lansing was lost. Dozens of passengers were injured, some seriously, but the survival rate stunned the world. Aviation experts called it nothing short of a miracle. Photos of the aircraft stunned the public. The top of the plane was gone. From the cockpit back to the wings, the plane looked like a giant had ripped it open. The images spread worldwide. Cementing Flight 243 is one of aviation's most shocking disasters. Investigators from the NTSB quickly arrived in Mali. They wanted to know how could such a catastrophic failure happen midair. The answer lay in the aircraft's age, maintenance history, and the harsh Hawaiian climate. The Boeing 737 had flown more than 89,000 flights known as cycles. Each cycle of pressurizing and depressurizing weakens metal over time. In Hawaii, with its salty, humid air, corrosion was even worse. Cracks had formed in the fuselage, hidden under paint and sealant. Maintenance crews had missed these cracks. The inspections required at the time weren't detailed enough to catch them. When the plane reached altitude that day, the metal fatigue finally gave way tearing open the roof in seconds. The NTSB's final report blamed poor maintenance and inspection procedures, combined with the aircraft's extreme flight cycles. They concluded the accident was preventable. If better checks had been made, the tragedy changed aviation forever. New inspection rules were introduced, especially for high-cycle aircraft. Airlines had to check fuselage integrity more thoroughly and Boeing redesigned certain parts to resist fatigue. The heroism of the pilots and crew was also recognized. Captain Schornstheimer and First Officer Tompkins received national awards for saving 90 for lives. Their calm under pressure became a textbook case in aviation training. Survivors described the experience as being sucked into a nightmare. Some never flew again. Others said they couldn't close their eyes at night without hearing the roar of the wind or feeling the turf. Roar of that open sky above them. For the families of Clarabelle Lansing, the loss was devastating. She was remembered as a dedicated flight attendant with 37 years of service. Her death highlighted the dangers flight crews face in protecting passengers. To this day, aviation enthusiasts, investigators, and survivors look back at Flight 243 as one of the most extraordinary survival stories in history. The fact that so many lived through an event that should have killed everyone still amazes experts. The ripped fuselage was later displayed publicly, reminding the world of what had happened. Images of that destroyed aircraft remain some of the most haunting photographs in aviation history. For Boeing, the incident was a wake-up call. They launched new programs to monitor aging aircraft and improve the safety of planes with heavy usage. Airlines worldwide had to adapt quickly or risk similar tragedies. For passengers, Flight 243 is proof that even in the darkest moments, survival is possible. Against impossible odds, a torn apart plane, at 24,000 feet, returns safely to the ground. It remains one of aviation's great miracles. Every flight today benefits from the lessons learned that day. Stronger inspection systems, stricter maintenance, and tougher regulations ensure that a disaster like Flight 243 is far less likely to happen again. Yet for those who lived it, the screams, the wind, and the terror never fully faded. Survivors still recall how time seemed to slow, how every second felt like an eternity between life and death. The bravery of Captain Schornstheimer, First Officer Tompkins, and the crew stands as an example of human courage. They faced chaos, death, and fear and somehow guided everyone home. Flight 243 wasn't just a disaster, it was a story of survival, tragedy, and change, it forced the world to see how fragile air travel could be, and how resilience and training can make the difference between life and death. So the next time you hear the roar of an airplane, remember this, in 1988, one aircraft lost its roof at 24,000 feet. It should have ended in total destruction, but instead, it became a story of survival written in the skies above Hawaii. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and like for more incredible mysteries and true stories.